Joe here with S3 Archery and uh, I wanted to make a video for you guys today and I really wanted to get outside and uh, do this video but because it's 10 below zero natural temps and it feels like 30 below zero according to the weather channel we're gonna have to do it from inside so I apologize for that in advance try not to do too many videos from indoors but uh, this is just one of those rare days that we we physically pretty much can't be outside in Minnesota so um, just bear with us but this is a a video I wanted to do for quite a while and uh, I just wanted to get it posted so uh, and what the video is going to be about today is the back quiver so as you all know I've been wearing the hidehandler.com back quiver for the past year now and I don't really want to do a review on this particular back quiver I just want to talk about back quivers in general um, really the the pros and cons of it and really the biggest question that a lot of people seem to have about back quivers and that's speed of being able to draw an arrow. So uh, I think there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of people out there who, who make a lot of statements um, that they probably haven't really experienced <laughs> the things that they're talking about too often or more times than not. So there's a lot of people out there that say having a back quiver is inferior because it, it's so much slower to draw arrows. And in the past year of using this back quiver, I just haven't found that to be the case. So I wanted to get a video out there and basically show you my draw technique and uh, not saying I'm fast at all but I think even me not being that great at pulling arrows out of the back quiver um, compared to probably like some kind of speed shooter if you actually train every day to be able to shoot really fast I'm sure it's amazing how fast they can probably draw arrows but for an average person who's been shooting a back quiver for about a year you know how quick can I draw them I just don't think after seeing how quick I can pull arrows, anyone's going to think that it's actually hindering your ability to shoot relatively fast. So I want to get that video out there, talk about a few techniques um, if, if it helps anybody. So um, obviously the back quiver, the pros about the back quiver really is just getting those arrows out from around you, getting them behind you where they're not affecting your shot at all. If you have a side quiver or a hip quiver, um, you can end up hitting them with your arms or your bows and whatnot when you're shooting. Whereas with the back quiver, when you pull, I mean, it doesn't even move. It's just back there, and they're designed in a way that there's there's zero hindrance on your shot process to have a back quiver, um, and that's really beneficial. And then, uh, and then obviously the con though is that they're behind you, and they're not as easy to see. So with a, a hip quiver. A lot of people will end up uh, having arrows like this if it's more of a target style and then they can grab the arrow underneath the fletch and you'll always see them do kind of a fancy little spin with the arrow as they're pulling it out and they get it ready to go and they're controlling the arrow in front of the fletch whereas with a back quiver it's really just the opposite the only people who I really see struggle with a back quiver are ones who try to grab the arrow underneath the fletch like a like a hip quiver you'll see them kind of go like this and they're working forever but Howard Hill his belief was that the only way to truly control an arrow is to grab it by the knock and if you do that with a back quiver I think you're gonna find it's much much quicker and much easier to pull arrows you just reach back there's the knock you pull it and what's great about that too is I'll put this back in there as you're um, reaching back you grab the knock if you have an index around the knock, you, in the process of pulling it out, you're already twisting the arrow. So by the time it makes it to your string, it's already ready to load and go ahead and shoot. Whereas with any kind of a hip quiver or a side quiver, when you're pulling it underneath the fletch, you have no idea where the indexer is until you actually look. And if you're looking at your knock indexer, trying to figure out how to knock the arrow on your string, you're not looking at whatever it is that you're trying to shoot. So you're, you've broken concentration. So that is a huge, huge benefit that I think has been ignored completely online. No one's ever talked about it. You do not want to break concentration with your target. So as an example, if I wanted to shoot the camera right now and I get in my mode and I see it, I'm going to reach back, I'm pulling, and I can go ahead and I can just knock it and go. Whereas if you had a hip quiver, I have to pull it, look, got it, knock it, look back up. So 
obviously that's not real time, but um, there's that break of concentration. You cannot pull from a hip quiver underneath or in front of the fletch technically and be able to knock your arrow unless it's a four fletch where it's not going to matter. But even then, what if you put the knock on, you know, the wrong direction? You're going to be trying to knock the arrow and you can't. So it's not foolproof with even a four fletch. Whereas when you have the knock indexers with a back quiver, you pull it, you're twisting it as it's coming down, and it's ready to go. And then you go ahead and you just knock it and you can shoot. So that's really a technique. Some people find if they're having a hard time getting the arrows in a position, maybe your back quiver actually isn't uh, positioned correctly on you, but or maybe it's a limited uh, ability to adjust your back quiver. People do something called the bump. And that's with the back end, the butt end of this uh, back of the back quiver here. You bump it with your bow or with your elbow, and that'll raise the arrow up. You can see it; it'll kind of raise the arrow up, and that makes it a little bit more accessible. I haven't found that to be a, something that I need to do with this particular back quiver, but um, like I said, some back quivers may have limited adjustments and not able to do it. So that's really. Uh, Really, all I want to talk about with that, I mean, there's different styles of back quiver. I obviously have like a uh, another harness here, a uh, third harness. So you got your primary strap, and then you've got this stabilizing strap, just so it's not moving around much. But uh, they come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, um, leather versus spurs, all sorts of stuff. But in general, you know, like I said, back quivers, I have not found a problem with them at all. I actually really enjoy them. They're very quiet when you're walking through the woods. If you have a hip quiver, sometimes your arrows are clanking all the time, or with the back quiver, it's a little bit more stabilized. And like I said, I've just, it's become very natural to just reach my hand up and find those arrows. So let me just uh, uh, pull arrows as if I was uh, trying to do some, I don't want to say speed shooting, but shooting relatively fast. I'll pull some arrows, and I'm just going to drop them on the ground once they're out because I'm not a speed shooter, and once I have them out, that's all about my ability to actually knock it on the string and then shoot it. it has nothing to do with the back quiver, so I'm not going to pay much attention to that. I'm just going to drop them on the floor, but let's give it a shot here and just see how fast I can pull arrows out of this hip quiver, or sorry, out of this back quiver, and uh, we'll just call it a day then. So going down the woods, see something I want to shoot at, and you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, six, seven, eight, nine. That's all my arrows, I believe. So, like I said, that's not my abilities to knock on the string and shoot, obviously that's going to add a couple seconds, but it's going to be that way no matter who you are, whether it's a hip quiver, a side quiver, a back quiver, it's going to take whatever time it takes you to knock an arrow onto a string. But as far as pulling arrows, I was not sitting here, oh, I did another arrow in there, I didn't even realize that. Um, ten. <laughs> um, I'm not sitting there and struggling to pull arrows looking like this on camera. It's just a pretty natural movement once you get used to it, and I think uh, you should give a back quiver a try if you haven't already. It's really, uh, really a great thing, really fun actually. Um, can't really ignore the optics or the aesthetics of it. It's just a really stylish thing. Just love it, and uh, it seems to work out great. So now I've got these arrows out, um, all on the ground. Another discussion point actually is how to load them. It's too slow to load them or when you're pulling from a target. So let's just take this arrow for example and when you shoot it, it usually goes you know, this much into a target or so. So you, you grab it at the base, you pull it and rather than readjusting your grip, just keep your hand right where it is and just spin it and it's right there. It's, there's really not much to it. So I'm going to put my hand right in the middle of the arrow, basically where the arrow would hit the block and B, pull it, twist it, and it's right there. I'm not looking, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking back here and looking where the mouth is. Right in the middle of the arrow, pull it, twist it, and drop it in. Middle of the arrow, pull it, twist it, drop it in. Now if I want to look, I can do that too, but if pull it, 
twist it, drop it in. Pull it, twist it, drop it in. Pull it, twist it, drop it in. But either way, I just have not found <laughs> um, putting it back into the quiver to be much of an issue whatsoever. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Take it for what it's worth. You know, it's, I'm always just out there giving information. Really no opinions on anything as far as uh, trying to steer you any direction one way or the other. But uh, definitely don't want to have misinformation out there and have that present, prevent people from buying a back quiver. Um, I'd rather have you have all the information and then make a decision based off what you really want and uh, just go from there. So hopefully this helped you all. Uh, hopefully it gave you a little bit more knowledge about back quivers and what they're capable of. And uh, otherwise, just shoot straight and we'll see you next time. Thanks.